Hi everyone! In today's tutorial I want to introduce you an awesome new feature in Blender 4.1. We'll be exploring the Bake Node, a powerful addition to Blender Geometry Nodes Toolkit. As the name suggests, this node isn't about baking pies, but rather about baking complex geometry data to enable efficient work and the creation of complex procedural geometry. So without further ado, let's dive into new Blend file and start creating our project. To give you a quick demonstration of the capabilities of the new bake node, let's start by using the default cube. I will demonstrate the time it takes Blender to calculate our geometry node system, so let's activate the timing option here. Now let's add a subdivide mesh node and set it up to 6 subdivisions. You will notice a slight increase in processing time, but overall this is still remarkably fast. To better showcase the functionality, let's create something a bit more complex. First we'll add a transform node and make some adjustments to its position, scale and rotation. Next let's incorporate a mesh boolean node and subtract the transform cube from the original one. We can even repeat this process twice for extra complexity. As you can see, our calculation time has now exceeds 1 second. Because of that, even minor adjustments require some time to compute, making working on this geometry node system much less convenient. This is where the bake node comes in handy. Let's add the bake node at the end to fix our performance issues. You will notice that we have both animation mode and still mode options. Selecting animation mode will bake the entire timeline range, while still mode will only bake the current frame. Since we only need a steel mesh, let's choose the steel mode and click on bake. After a short while, you will see that the bake node has been updated. Now if I connect a set position node afterward, you will notice that I can freely adjust the position and everything remains more or less in real time. Blender stores mesh data on disk, which is why the process is so quick. However, it also means that any changes made before the bake node will not affect our final results. This is because what comes out of the bake node remains unchanged. If you want to recalculate the results, we need to press the bake button again. Now we can see the updated geometry. Finally, there's the trash icon which allows you just to easily delete the baked data. Alright, so that was a brief overview of the bake node. Now let's dive into a more practical example. I will demonstrate how to create an auto damage system for a simple base geometry. We will use the bake node to vastly improve our workflow and speed up a lot of things. Let's get started. Alright, let's begin by modeling some basic geometry. I will start by duplicating our default cube, delete the geometry nodes modifier and then add a few loop cuts and extrusions to create a staircase like shape. Something like that. Our first step now in creating an automatic damage system will involve generating an edge damage effect. We'll achieve this by using a boolean operation between the original shape and the deformed one. Now let's proceed to create a deformed shape. Firstly, I will remesh our geometry using the mesh to volume node set up to a low voxel amount. Then, I will incorporate a volume to mesh node. Since we aim to generate more detailed geometry, let's remesh once again. This time with a higher voxel count, approximately around 300. As you can observe, our geometry appears quite jagged, with noticeable horizontal and vertical lines. To fix this, let's apply a slight smoothing effect using set position node position node and blur attribute node between. You can adjust the number of iterations to achieve more or less smooth results. To reintroduce sharpness to our geometry, we can utilize the original geometry along with the geometry proximity node. This node enables us to retrieve the position data from the original mesh. To maintain control over this effect, we can incorporate the original position of the remeshed geometry 
using a position node. Finally, we can blend between these two using a vector mix node. If you zoom in on the sharp edges area, you can see that the geometry here is pretty stretched up. We want to have more even geometry for better displacement. To fix it, we can just remesh once again with the voxel amount set to 300. To add additional details, we can incorporate a noise texture node. I want to deform our geometry along the face normal direction. To achieve this, let's start by adding a normal node and scaling it using a vector math scale node. Then we will connect the noise texture to the scale input of the vector scale node. Finally, we will plug the setup into the new set position node at the end. It seems a bit too strong at the moment. To refine the control over the strength, let's introduce another vector scale node into the setup. This will allow us to fine tune this effect. Now feel free to experiment with these settings to achieve the desired results. To create more uniform results and better control the effect, I will use a map range node to remap values from the noise texture. The noise texture by default ranges from 0 to 1. I intend to remap it to start from minus half to half, as I want to offset my geometry both inward and outward. I think something like this look great. Before proceeding, let's ensure that we save our file, as the next step might potentially lead to crashes, especially on less powerful computers. Now let's add a mesh boolean node, set it to intersect, and connect our original geometry first, followed by our new geometry. We can preview the results by connecting it to the output. It may take a moment to calculate, but after a while, we will see the final result. As you can see, it looks quite impressive. However, without applying the modifier, we can't really work on it any further, due to the long calculation time. Thankfully, with the introduction of Blender 4.1, the bake node comes to our rescue. Let's connect it after the mesh boolean node. Wait once again. Press bake and wait for the last time. Now we are free to continue working on it this without any performance constraints. Now if we switch to wireframe mode, you will notice that the geometry is quite not uniform. To utilize displacement effectively, we require a much more evenly divided mesh. To achieve this, we once again utilize the remesh operation using mesh to volume and volume to mesh node. I will set mesh to volume to high value around 400. Now it's time to introduce displacement. We will utilize some noise texture to add additional details to our surface, similar to what we did earlier. Let's duplicate the entire displacement setup from here so that we don't have to recreate it from scratch. We will connect it at the end, here. I want to create uniform displacement on my surface, both inward and outward. I will use a map range node again to remap values from our noise texture. With a setup like this, I can easily tweak the settings of the noise texture and the vector math scale node to achieve the desired effect. Ok, I like this effect. As you can observe, the bake node enables me to efficiently work on my displacement. Now I want to add an extra layer of detail to our geometry. Let's duplicate the displacement setup once more.
but this time I will use color ramp instead of map range node. I will proceed to adjust the settings of the noise texture. Specifically, let's change the type to heteroterrain. Now, let's experiment with the contrast. I aim to create these interesting little holes in my geometry. However, to achieve an actual hole inside, we need to reverse the direction. To accomplish this, I simply input a negative number into the same parameter of the vector math scale node here. Alright, the last issue we need to address is the high poly count of our geometry. Fortunately, there's a simple solution to fix this problem. We just need to remesh the entire structure once again. To do this, let's add mesh to volume node and set the resolution to 512. Then add a volume to mesh node. Now the usual step is to increase the adaptive value, for example to 0.1. If you switch to wireframe mode now, you will notice that we have significantly fewer polygons, yet the effect remains essentially the same. This is exactly what we wanted, a reduction in poly count without sacrificing the desired visual impact. To finalize our work, we can add a set smooth shade node at the end. And this is it. We successfully created a set of basic stairs with detailed damage effect. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something new. The bake note is a really powerful tool and I hope that I showed you what you can do with it. If you want to download the final file for this project, you can find the link in the description. Also, if you want to support my channel, you can check out my Blender add-ons and assets packs. Links also in the description. Thanks again for watching, see you again soon and bye!